Yo, likely a quick review of Act 3 of Fontaine's Art Conquest, mainly because it was a lot of setup. Nothing too too eventful. Also, they immediately started Act 4 right after, so I want to play through that. The flashback we get with Neville and Farina was probably the most interesting to me since it really showcases how much of a facade Farina seems to put on and how much she relies on Neville to deal with Fontaine's diplomatic affairs. It's like she doesn't have the faintest of clues of how Teyvat politics works at all, which is very unique for an Archon. I'm really interested in why Farina feels uneasy around Arlecchino. Paimon thinks Arlecchino is threatening Farina, but I think it's likely more so on Farina's end, where she just feels inferior to Arlecchino, and is why she needs Neville there at the tea party to do all the talking. Each time Arlecchino asks Farina a question, Farina redirects it to Neville. In fact, I would say she deflects it to Neville. It could be related to the Fontaine prophecy. Linny claimed that Arlecchino's goal is to save Fontaine, and Neville mentioned that Farina has not yet figured out how to prevent the prophecy from happening, which Arlecchino may have a problem with because it can be seen as Fontaine's Archon not being able to protect the nation. I hope Act 4 will go more in depth about it, because as it stands, Act 3 Farina has zero confidence, which is very different from Acts 1 and 2 where she was livid with energy. So it makes me wonder why the 4.1 artwork has her so joyful. Arlecchino gets her first in-game appearance too, being the fourth of the Harbingers and having a pyro vision on her back. I thought it was funny that getting child back is only one of her goals, and is probably not even the main goal. It proves more of Child's voice line about how the other Harbingers are always scheming around. Arlecchino's request to check on Child does seem to have a huge impact because Neville's compromise to have us be the ones to check up on Child instead seems like a really reluctant request. Because since we're gonna go into the fortress of Meropede as falsely accused criminals, it goes against the whole theme of Fontaine's justice system and how the last quest emphasized that the Oratrice has never made a false verdict and yet here we are having Child be falsely accused, and it's Neville that suggests that we be falsely accused. I just think that thematically, Neville's suggestion feels a little bit out of character, or Arlecchino's request just takes super high priority. Probably the latter, given diplomatic relationships with Shnezhnaya. Also, just wanted to point out what is likely another inconsistent writing point, because Traveler claims that Child is their friend, which I'm sure will cause more internet debacles with people arguing more over Traveler's inconsistent relationship with the Fatui. It's just sad to me how inconsistently written the Traveler is. Anyways, we head to the Fortress of Meropi to check up on Child, who's disappeared. I think the culture in the Fortress of Meropi is interesting. All the criminals there start from square one, and the credit coupon currency is king. The more coupons someone has, the more options and power they have in the Fortress. Risley claims that everyone's labor is crucial for the maintenance of the fortress, and it does seem like a decent system. He even made it so that everyone gets one free meal a day, so that gives them more options to use their coupons. I do wonder what the goals of people here are though, especially after they've earned a bunch of coupons. Like, what's next for them? What do they work towards? Even Lynette just says that there is an abundance of coupons lying around, and she just gives us a bunch. It seems that Risley will have more screen time next act, so there's not much for me to comment on him here. Lenny and Lynette are here as well on Arlecchino's mission, trying to investigate some forbidden zone that might be hosting the Hydronosis, which begs another question of why Faruna doesn't have it. I wonder if it's because the Gnosis is being used to power much of the technology in Fontaine somehow. Fremine is also here, but it's funny to me that he's not present with his siblings. And it makes me think the writers only included him because later on we learn we need a diver to investigate the flooded pipes. I don't have too much else to comment on the fortress and its hidden rules since the hidden rules turn out to be mainly rumors. I am surprised however we didn't bring up primordial water not even once in this entire quest since there were talks about people disappearing. I do think however that the dreams of child we saw were super noteworthy. Apparently he's gone missing and if he's neither in the fortress nor outside it, then hmm, I wonder which dimension he may possibly be in. Could it be somewhere that he's been disappeared to before when he was 14? What if he's looking for a particular person he's been trying to find since he got out of the abyss? Hmm. 
But yeah, all signs point to the voice calling him to be Skirk, or at least someone or something from the abyss. Perhaps that one whale he saw, maybe? Sus, sus, sus? The fact that his vision resonated with us to show memories of Child in the fortress when he didn't have his vision is pretty huge. How does the vision know what Child went through even though they're separated? Is there some omnipotent force at work that's able to link a vision user and their vision at all times? Or could it be that the residues of Child are resonating with the vision somehow? I don't know, but maybe it's some Erminso or Celestia shenanigans or something? I thought this was really, really interesting though. But yeah, the act pretty much concluded right into Act 4, so I hope things pay off. The main things I think should be addressed more are Arlequino and Farina's relationship, the Forbidden Zone in the Fortress and the Hydronosis, and how that could play into the prophecy, Child and what is likely to be an Abyss-related voice, and Neville and Risley's relationship. Cool, that's it for this quick video. Time for me to play through Act 4, so the next video will be reviewing that. Thank you for watching, and later! No, not at all. Look, <laughs> I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine. <laughs> what was that? Lord, what was that animation? Who is loved and adored by many. The god of justice who is loved and adored by many and also can teleport away instantly, bro. I saw that, I saw that. Yo, best Archon ever.